What's going on guys? I wanted to talk about the AFE spider intake for the Ford 7.3. Do a little review on it. This is a 2001 Ford F250. I've got most of the upgrades that you would do on the aftermarket, simple stuff, such as a chip, the Banks Ram Air intake, I have the Banks power elbow that you can see down there with four inch exhaust all the way back and a Garrett ball bearing turbo. So it, it runs pretty decent for a 7.3, but I have this AFE spider intake and I have a few gripes about it. First of all, when I first installed it, you see the lower down there. Here's the upper that goes down the cold side, but it never did fit right to begin with. The whole objective of this thing is to keep the two parts separate because the original manifold is a one piece design. So they say that the heat from the exhaust side will migrate to the intake side and give you a hotter intake charge. Well, the main problem to begin with was that upon initial installation, down underneath here, when you had the, when you have the intake fitted in the way it's supposed to point, I actually had to grind the underside because it was hitting the exhaust in order to be able to get it down as low as it is right now. Okay, so it's easy enough to loosen the clamp. So I'll just take it off. So you can see on the bottom, barely, if you look closely, how it had to be grinded to clear the exhaust side. That was the first problem. The second problem is the alignment on the boost tube on the intake side. Now the exhaust side fits pretty decent right here, you can see. But I've had the intake off several times trying to get the stock boost tube to line up. Now keep in mind, the stock boost tube lined up perfectly with the stock spider intake. But with the AFE, I still haven't been able to get it right. This is probably about the third time trying to do it. So I'm gonna try to tighten it up. I'm gonna try to get the angle correct on the intake to fit with this. But I think when it's done, you'll see that it's still gonna be off. The only other real fix I think would be to take the boost tube off and try to put some type of other bend in it. And truthfully, I don't think this part's really gonna give you any noticeable power increase. All it's really gonna do is take your money. But I'm gonna work on it and we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so it's starting to go back together. And you can see right from the get-go that the alignment from the boost tube is off. See the big gap in the front and it's pretty tight in the back. And you try moving this intake up and down, it doesn't make it any better. So you move it up, it's a little short. You move it down, starts to contact the exhaust side right there. And that's after it was grinded. And I'm not the type to complain. You know, everything else works good. This intake is great. The turbo, great. Nice sound out of it, by the way. The Banks exhaust fit perfect. The Sinister Diesel fuel return, that works great. Okay, it's all put back together. You can see how low the AFE is compared to the boost tube. Look at the boot. And I could use a new boot. I'm not gonna lie about that. Okay, I blew the boost tube off one more time. By the way, these vibrant intake boots are pretty much junk also. When you go to tighten it, the clamp slips off the side. And I didn't even tighten this clamp all the way or it would fall off completely. So these vibrant boots are going in the trash and I got a heavy duty one from Banks. This just came in from Banks Engineering. Pedal monster, that's something else. Oh, look at this nice three inch boot. I think we'll put this on and see what happens. So here's comparing the vibrant intake boot to the Gale Banks. See the difference in thickness. No bellow on the vibrant. Nice big bellow on the Banks. This boot is extra long compared to the stock one. Look at the length of that thing compared to this Vibrant, which is the same length as what the stock one was. So hopefully we'll be able to fix the problem for good. Look at the alignment. See how that angle is off? Okay, if you move this up, angle is off. Everything's off, okay? Move it down. You, you still have a bigger gap on the front than you do on the back. Okay, good news. We got this thing installed with that Banks intake boot. 
and it actually cleans this installation up quite a bit. I think AFE should actually include this type of boot with the kit when they sell it because I'm real happy now. Actually, I took the springs out of the clamps. They have a good tension on the, the boot. You can see right here, it's got enough room for movement. You can still see the misalignment on the boot that's on the other side, right here. But I think we'll be able to work with it like this. Hey, so now that we know the fix, if you need high quality boost tube boots, go to the website. We have the boots listed on there. Here's the standard three inch boot. This is a three and a half inch boot, which is technically for a Banks Technicooler. But we have some universal sizes that you can choose from. All you need to do is measure what you have on your truck, whether it's Chevy, Ford or Dodge, any of the diesels. If you need these for general repair, they're available. Racetuning.com.